grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to offer our thanksgivings to God, let us confess our sins, that God will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Almighty God, who sent your servant John the Baptist to prepare your people to welcome the Messiah, inspire us, the ministers and stewards of your truth, to turn our disobedient hearts to you, that when the Christ shall come again to be our judge, we may stand with confidence before his glory who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Come, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> comfort my people, says our God, comfort them. Encourage the people of Jerusalem. Tell them they have suffered long enough and their sins are now forgiven. I have punished them in full for all their sins. A voice cries out, Prepare in the wilderness a road for the Lord. Clear the way in the desert for our God. Fill every valley, level every mountain. The hills will become a plain and the rough country will be made smooth. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it. The Lord himself has promised this. A voice cries out, proclaim a message. What message shall I proclaim, I ask? 
proclaim that all human beings are like grass. They last no longer than wild flowers. Grass with and flowers fade when the Lord sends the wind blowing over them. People are no more enduring than grass. Yes, grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our God endures forever. Jerusalem, go up on a high mountain and proclaim the good news. Call out with a loud voice, Zion, announce the good news. Speak out and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah that their God is coming. The sovereign Lord is coming to rule with power, bringing with him the people he has rescued. He will take care of his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs together and carry them in his arms. He will gently lead their mothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Show us your mercy, O Lord. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored your good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven all the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. Show us, Show us your mercy, O Lord. I will listen to what you, Lord God, are saying, for you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Lord, you will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before you, and peace shall be a pathway to your feet. Show us your mercy, O Lord. A reading from the second letter of Peter. But do not forget one thing, my dear friends. There is no difference in the Lord's sight between one day and a thousand years. To him, the two are the same. The Lord is not slow to do what he has promised, as some think. He, instead, he is patient with you because he does not want anyone to be destroyed but wants all to turn away from their sins. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will disappear with a shrill noise. The heavenly bodies will burn up and be destroyed and the earth with everything in it will vanish. Since all these things will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people should you be? Your lives should be holy and dedicated to God as you wait for the day of God and do your best to make it come soon. The day when the heavens will burn up and be destroyed and the heavenly bodies will be melted by the heat. But we wait for what God has promised, new heavens and a new earth where righteousness will be at home. And so my friends, as you wait for that day, do your best to be pure and faultless in God's sight and to be at peace with him. Look on our Lord's patience as the opportunity he is giving you to be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Prepare, prepare for the coming of the Lord. In the desert, prepare a road. Every valley shall be lifted high, each mountain and hill made low.
All you who wait the coming, rehearse the joyful song that shall be sung forever with voices clear and strong. Prepare, prepare for the coming of the Lord. In the desert, prepare a road. Every valley shall be lifted high, each mountain and hill made low. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with your feet. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began as the prophet Isaiah had written. God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to open the way for you. Someone is shouting in the desert, get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. So John appeared in the desert, baptizing and preaching. Turn away from your sins and be baptized, he told the people, and God will forgive your sins. Many people from the province of Judea and from the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins and he baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. He announced to the people the man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of Christ. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever suffered a serious injury? Perhaps a really bad cut? Or a badly broken bone? Or even surgery? The human body has a wonderful ability to heal from injuries like that. But even so, the healing takes time and it's not always easy. 
after the wound has been cleaned up, we feel some relief at first as a bandage is put on it. At least when the wound is covered with a bandage, well, we don't have to look at the wound. We don't have to see it, how ugly it is, how disfiguring it is. But as part of the process of healing, the bandage will at some point have to come off the wound. We'll have to look at that wound again. What will it look like? Will removing the bandage hurt? Taking a bandage off a wound is not always pleasant, but it has to happen. Looking at the damage our body has sustained is not an easy thing to do. As with the body, so also with the soul. Our souls can be injured or damaged just as our bodies can be. Some spiritual wounds are minor and heal quickly. Others are more serious and take more time to heal. Some spiritual wounds are caused by others, but the vast majority are self-inflicted. And as with an injury to our body, looking at the damage to our soul is an unavoidable and necessary part of being healed. This is not an easy thing to do. When we have behaved in a way that makes us feel ashamed, it can be hard even to look at ourselves in the mirror, let alone look more closely at what we have done and why. But nothing can be healed until the injury is acknowledged. Oh, confessed, brought to light, and made visible. A spiritual injury that remains hidden cannot be healed. The scripture readings today are telling us about someone who is coming to heal our spiritual injuries and wounds. Isaiah tells us Comfort my people, says our God. Comfort them. Encourage the people of Jerusalem. Tell them they have suffered long enough and their sins are now forgiven. I have punished them in full for all their sins. St. Peter reminds us of the infinite patience and mercy of God. The Lord is patient with you because he does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants all to turn away from their sins. John the Baptist says that the healer of our souls is now very near. 
The man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Someone is coming who can heal our spiritual wounds. Jesus Christ is the great physician and healer of our souls. But John the Baptist, well, he's the paramedic, the first responder. He gets us ready for the healer who is coming. And John the Baptist's treatment, repentance and confession, is a treatment we can apply right now, before the physician arrives. Bring your sins to light, and the great physician will heal them forever. And because this person, this great healer, is now very near, we can find the courage to look at our spiritual wounds, because we know that they will soon be healed. Of course, it is not easy looking at our wounds. But now perhaps we can see that it is a helpful step towards healing. John the Baptist told the people of Judea, turn away from your sins and God will forgive your sins. Well, that's God's invitation to us and to all people, not just the people in ancient Judea. Turn away from your sins and God will forgive you your sins. We are told that many people who heard John took him up on that invitation. Many people from the province of Judea the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins. And the people hear John and they respond. And we are invited to join them. We are invited to confess our sins. We are invited to look at our spiritual wounds and bring them to light so that they can be healed. Looking at our spiritual wounds is not easy. Bringing our sins to light is painful, but it is the way to spiritual health. Over the centuries, the Christian tradition has developed a way for us to look unflinchingly at our spiritual wounds. Find another believer, a trusted confidant, someone with whom you can share your spiritual wounds in confidence. Confess your sins. Name them. Bring them to light. And when you do that, one of the first things you will discover is that nothing about them is unusual. They are part of the human condition. You are not some kind of depraved monster. You are just a sinner. And God has already dealt with that. 
confess your sins and they will evaporate. And if the person to whom you confess happens to be a priest, you will immediately hear and receive God's forgiveness. Confess your sins and you will be forgiven. Take off the bandage and you will be healed. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for Jesus to come among us, let us offer prayers to God who feeds his flock like a shepherd. O oh Lord, remembering Melissa, our Archbishop, and our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Northern Philippines and, and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear Lord. our prayer. Uphold Elizabeth our Queen and those in authority under her and give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right and to long for your kingdom. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise that all may share the good things you provide. Heal the sick, remembering especially both Joanne and Dawn, and strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Receive the souls of Ross and Mike, and remember those, who an those whose anniversaries are at this time. Gertrude Hodge, Ethel Marks, Bertie Trugan, Maurice New, Ella Armitage, 
Irene Short, Peter Fenrich Sr., Florence Cutler, Marine Pozacek, Jean Gladish, Barbara Lewis, and grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and comfort to those who, who mourn. And concluding with the parish prayer, life-giving God, you have given us hope and steadfastness in our life as a parish. You have instilled generosity and compassion within us and among us. Encourage us to hold fast to this within our parish and fill us with vision and courage as we seek to be more deeply connected with our wider community and our neighborhood. Inspire us with your justice and peace through Christ Jesus. Amen. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Receive all we offer you this day as you sustain us with your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who in the fullness of time came among us in our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge this world, that we, without shame or fear, may rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. After those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. gifts of God for the people of God. Delighted to hear from her. 
they write to the St. Thomas Parish family, may your Christmas sparkle with moments of love, laughter, and goodwill. And may the year ahead be full of contentment and joy, sending you beautiful blessings, wishing you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Charles, Palin, and Anna. Do we have more announcements or even seasonal greetings for that matter? Oh, right there. All right. Can you hear me out there? Yes, they say yes. Okay, good. Um, I want to draw your attention to three um, really great events coming up this week. First in time, of course, is the what was going to be our, our great lighting. The, the lights are up on the tree and around the church, and the presents representing the um, participation of our community partners will be placed there, and they include South Bend Neighborhood House, Waverly School, um, the politicians, Harjit Sejan, Don Davies, and George, George Chow. Um, and the Maranatha Church, and I'm forgetting who else, but Girl Scouts, Boy Guides, oh, Boy Guides Girl Scouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so those will go up today, and that launches the beginning of our drive to collect warm clothing and food items for those in our community who are really struggling. And so South Bend Neighborhood House is going to be distributing those. So the times are set, set up in bulletin, but um, you, your friends, and anyone else you can tell can come and drop things off. Uh, this week, um, Monday to Thursday, between 9.30 and 4.30, and also on Saturday, the same time. And so what you do is you come up the ramp uh, on the St. Margaret Street entrance, and the boxes to collect will be just inside. <laughs> So that's um, this week. So uh, the, uh, the next event is our um, Christmas delight, our Christmas concert, whatever you want to call it, on December 10th at 7.30 over Zoom. And this is really an opportunity for all of us to get together informally to share Christmas traditions, to share songs, to get a chance to sing our favorite carols. A spoiler alert, there will be a sing-along, and so you will be able to um, request your favorite songs. And uh, Rita, as always, can pull the magic out of a hat and play pretty much whatever you, you will ask for. So we'll have music and stories and all kinds of things. And so we invite you to find your favorite Christmas beverage and snack and curl up and enjoy an hour of uh, fellowship. So that's Thursday at... Um, 7.30, and uh, we will be sending the uh, program over uh, the, the email this week, so you'll have it uh, in hand and know what to expect. And um, the last thing that I want to tell you about is that next week, um, Julie Diesta from South Bend Neighborhood House is going to be with us, and during the notice time, she's just going to take just a few minutes to tell us, to bring us up to date on our, the situation in our community um, in terms of food insecurity. It's shocking that that should be the case, um, but that it is, and she's going to give us some information about that, and also um, she is going to, well, essentially she's going to tell us what's happening now, because of course this is a situation that has been changing, especially with the pandemic. And thanks to your generosity, we are being able to send um, funds to them from time to time to help them to supply food to those who need it. And um, in terms of the Christmas outreach program, uh, keep those dollars coming. We have collected so far about $1,700, which will go to Waverly School and to um, South Bend Neighborhood House uh, for provision of Christmas hampers to people who really need it. Um, oh, and I should tell you that um, one of the things that's gonna happen with your Christmas outreach dollars is that um, seniors who are isolated 
and who can't come to have a dinner with anyone else will have a complimentary um, turkey dinner delivered to their house with a nice car for us. So um, that's some of the exciting things that are happening. I'm sure I've forgotten something that maybe Jay will pick up on in these amendments. Um, there's so many opportunities in, in Advent to get ready for Christmas. And uh, the first one is to commend to you if you are able to join us on Wednesday uh, mornings for midday Eucharist. Um, like we're having on Sundays, it's a set service, and Michael always prepares a, a thoughtful uh, sermon. Um, and the second thing, also on Wednesday, but this is Wednesday evening, uh, Bryn Cockney is leading us uh, with help from participants in the uh, Book of Common Prayer Confine service. Um, Bryn assures me that uh, as we go through this, my and perhaps your ambivalence to the language of the Book of Common Prayer uh, will be overcome and uh, the beauty of that service will be renewed. So please join us and as always I will send those notices out to you by uh, email or Zoom links. I just wanted to, um, well Cheryl just forgot one um, group and it's the Victoria Drive Business Improvement Association that's also going to have a box or a parcel under the tree. Um, the other thing I wanted to remind you about is that um, this stuff is all about learning new things. And one of the new things that we're learning this season is about origami stars. So I um, hope that you've all got your letter from Michael and um, inside there were the origami sheets. So um, please look at the video and um, you know, go step by step, use your pause button on the video and um, make your origami stars and send them back to the church with your, your name and then maybe a little Christmas message. And um, if you can send them back before September, uh, before December the 20th, that would be great. Thanks. And I'm gonna take a moment just to amplify what Cheryl said, because she's far too modest that we say everything when she was talking about the food and clothing drive. But that, that event was organized by a group of people who worked very, very hard to plan an event for tonight. And then things changed and it wasn't possible to have events. And so that group went back to the drawing board and worked even harder to plan uh, a way for the food and clothing drive to happen, even though we couldn't gather uh, outside the church. And I want to acknowledge uh, the hard work that has gone into both the first version and the second version of this effort. And to commend to you the food and clothing drive and encourage your support and thank those who have already contributed generously to this collection for our neighbors. Would you please stand? The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.